Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Kevin Connors. Welcome to another of our podcasts. On this podcast, um, we are going to address some questions that you have that we've sent in by some listeners. And the question that we want to address today is fatigue and cancer. The question was, why does a cancer patient have fatigue? And quite specifically, why do I have so much fatigue with my cancer? Let's jump right into that. So the main reason why a person with cancer would have fatigue has to do with anemia. So there's different types of anemia, and there is a type of anemia that will be seen on a CBC, on a blood test, that will show red blood cells and hemoglobin. That's called anemia of chronic disease. Now, when we talk about a person with cancer, we know what the chronic disease is. So why would a cancer patient have anemia? Well, several reasons. But one of the reasons is, and the most common reason, is that cancer cells, okay, so cells that are in a state of rapid replication are going to draw a lot of iron. They're going to need iron for replenishment of cellular membranes and cellular uh, tissue that is being created in the replication of new cells. They're going to need energy. They're going to need oxygen. So iron is going to be depleted in a rapidly replicating cancer. So a person with cancer and the cancer is growing and increased growth is taking place. One of the first signs that you're going to see is a, a relative anemia. So when you do a, a blood test, you see a low red blood cell count, you see a low hemoglobin count, and you know you have a cancer diagnosis, that's one of the first things you're going to consider. Now, one of the uh, things that uh, your doctor may recommend is that you start taking iron supplementation in this case. You will not be able to get a um, transfusion unless your hemoglobin is typically below 7, 7.5, depending upon the rules of that hospital. But iron supplementation may be in order. The problem is, is that I said a growing cancer tends to gobble up iron. Now that could be an issue if I just feeding my cancer by adding iron supplementation? Well, yes and no. Uh, first of all, let's state that the type of iron that a person should take, whether you have cancer or not, should be a whole food form iron. Typically what's recommended is a ferrous sulfate. I don't recommend that. That will typically constipate a person. It's very difficult to digest and the absorption rate is low and the usability rate once it gets into the blood is low. We, t we recommend a food-based iron that's going to be better absorbed, that's not going to cause any of the issues with gut issues that ferrous sulfate will. Secondly, will, uh, will iron supplementation be the smart thing to do if it's going to feed my cancer? Well, it is a, in a situation of catch-22 because we don't want to leave a person in a state of anemia that's going to be fatigued, that's going to cause all sorts of issues. Um, but there's the, the knowledge that there are certain um, cancer-killing uh, herbs that tend to follow iron, we can take advantage of that. So if a person has anemia, uh, typically we recommend a food-based iron supplement plus taking the herb artemisinin. Artemisinin is an herb that can be a cancer killer. Um, and since it tends to follow iron by coupling it with iron with a person with anemia, if the cancer is gobbling up the iron, it will gobble up the artemisinin as well. And that can be beneficial to help kill the growing cancer. So typically we recommend taking artemisinin with the iron supplementation and uh, that's going to be your best bet. Now it's difficult to deal with a, with a rapidly replicating cancer that's gobbling up iron solely with supplementation. So you want to make sure that you're getting a CBC, a blood test done, so that your hemoglobin isn't dropping below that range. And we do recommend you either get packed red blood cells or a transfusion. If it does drop below that range, it can be very beneficial as far as how you feel. It can make you feel like a world of difference. Another reason, another type of anemia that you could get with cancer is B12 deficiency anemia. Uh, uh, that is a, not an uncommon problem as well. Now, if you're going to take B12 supplementation, again, you could do a blood test to find this out. But if you're going to take B12 supplementation, or if you're a cancer patient, you're currently taking B12 just for um, health benefits, make sure you look at the back of your bottle 
we don't recommend methylated B12, and it'll say methylcobalamin on it. And the reason is, is that methyl groups, so though they're so beneficial for, for all of us, for cancer patients, what methyl groups do is they turn off genes. And many people, especially with MTHFR defects, can have a deficiency in methyl groups, and that could be an issue. Um, and then taking methylcobalamin might be in order. But typically for cancer patients, we don't recommend supplementing with methyl groups. You're going to get enough dietary methyl groups by eating your vegetables and your greens. We don't recommend supplementing with methylfolate or methylcobalamin because it will, it can uh, aid in, uh, in our heads, hinder by turning off tumor suppressor genes. And we don't want to turn off tumor suppressor genes. So we don't use methyl groups in our office. That's your choice. We typically recommend if we're going to use a B12, a hydroxycobalamin or a adenosylcobalamin. They're both very available. They're available in our store, most uh, clinics, and uh, you can buy them online. Hydroxycobalamin or um, adenosylcobalamin, not methylcobalamin, not cyanocobalamin. Um, another reason why a person can be deficient uh, or can have energy deficiency with cancer is simply that the growing cancer is gobbling up your ATP, your energy sources. So there's a lot of ATP, a lot of energy that's required to produce new cells. That's what's taking place with a growing cancer. So um, uh, that can be an issue as well. So we do not recommend supporting with mitochondrial supplements that's very common out there in the, in the natural marketplace. Um, that's not what we recommend with cancer because you could be supporting the mitochondria of the cancer cells themselves. We do wanna look at if this is the case, is the person eating enough? That is a common problem with later stage cancer, especially the person doesn't have an appetite, they're not eating enough, and they're just not getting enough calories. So getting good quality calories, not just uh, you know some of the prepared drinks that are out there are not a good choice. You want good quality calories with good quality fats um, with, with cancer, so make sure you contact your office about that as well. Okay, so hopefully that covers um, some broader things about the energy issues and fatigue with cancer. Make sure if you appreciated this video that you like it. We, we do appreciate that, that you uh, subscribe to us so you can get our podcasts and share it on Facebook. Um, that's helpful to us to get the word out there so that we can help more people. And again, if you need anything, go to www.connersclinic.com. Look at our clinic. Um, we're gladly uh, there to answer questions. And we do have a nutrition store that you can click on through there. And get anything you need as well. So again, Dr. Connors, thank you very much.